All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'm going over the vacuum line setup. So this, is, this video is part of a series of uh, in-depth documentation of how I decided to route various lines throughout the course of the 944 project and uh, the different ways that I, I decided to set things up. Some of these systems, like uh, power steering and air conditioning especially, I'm waiting until I've had the car running for a little while, so that way it, I'm sure that it's gonna work. But uh, some of these systems, like uh, coolant, fuel, etc., are probably going to remain the same, with uh, the exception of a few minor changes. So I'm going to go ahead and push those videos out now while I'm continuing to uh, button up the 944. In today's episode, we're going over uh, vacuum lines. To do this, you're going to need a, a couple of things. Um, first of all, you're going to need to have uh, the lines themselves. I ordered these. These are silicone lines from, uh, I can't remember where, I'll put in a comment down below. And there are two sizes that I decided to go with. One is uh, 1 8 inch uh, for an interior diameter, and the other is uh, 3 8 inch. And that's probably going to get most of what you need done. Uh, I think I ordered like maybe 10 feet of the 1 8 inch and uh, 5 feet, maybe less, of the uh, 3 8 inch. If you are concerned about heat, there are uh, fiberglass covers that you can put over top of your uh, vacuum lines, which also sink heat up. So if you're running natural or uh, running, so if you're running a turbocharger, uh, that might be a good thing to look at. All right. So on the bottom of the intake, there are a series of holes for uh, eighth inch NPT and two. Uh, quarter inch MPT and this is where you generate your vacuum from so each one of these holes is uh, where you can hook up uh, vacuum accessories um, and you can get these little barbs off of Amazon that's what I did or you can see that we have a little block off one here so if you have a hole that's unused you can get a uh, quarter inch or an eight inch inch NPT uh, threaded uh, one there so hey, uh, Editor Cameron from the future, a little note here that I didn't know about NPT threads because this is the first and pretty much the only time I've ever had to deal with them. You don't need to screw them all the way in. They're actually designed to cinch down sort of towards the surface. What I did was I actually tightened them too much and then they wouldn't continue to screw and I actually ripped out a bunch of the threads in the intake. Fortunately, I had Spencer here for the week and he was able to help me uh, figure out how to retap these so that way they could be used again. But NPT is, is a very different thread pitch and design than all of the other stuff that we've been dealing with so far. Not 100% certain why NPT was chosen for the threads on these intake holes, but just keep that in mind. You don't need to drill them all the way in. You'll have to forgive my intake. I'm having trouble taking it all the way off because of these plugs and I don't really want to force them. Um, so this is going to be a little bit difficult to see. But um, vacuum is generated out of the bottom of the intake here. You can see there's six slots. So if you have six accessories you need vacuum for, uh, these are what you're going to have to use. There are two quarter inch uh, holes. These are quarter inch NPT. So you need to have an adapter. In this case, I have this one plugged off, so a quarter inch MPT plug. And then we use thread sealant around the outside of the threads to make sure that we're not gonna have a vacuum leak. Um, the other quarter inch NPT connection I used comes to this 90 degree 3 8 inch connection for one of those hoses that I suggested. And it goes all the way to the brake booster. The uh, brake booster on this one actually broke and I had it replaced. And uh, that is the connection which will provide vacuum to make it sure that you can break. So this one's pretty straightforward. It's right at the back of the intake and it points almost directly at the uh, brake booster there. Moving down the line in the center here, the other 3 8 inch connection is this one here. And it goes pretty much right here. It's currently disconnected, but it's going to the IMAP sensor which is you need to have uh, in order for the engine to figure out how much vacuum is currently in the uh, in the intake so that way it can do proper calculations. I've just bolted mine to the side over here and then I'm going to plug that in manually and put a little clamp over it and that should be fine. Other people have put this uh, this little IMAP sensor elsewhere but I have these these screw holes and it's tightened down and it's not going anywhere so that seemed to be just fine for me. That's two out of four done. All right the uh, next one is the center one and it's this uh, this 1 8 NPT 90 degree to 8 inch connector and it's, uh, it's a 90 degree one and it's going straight through the top of the intake. If we follow it here, you can see that it's routed over the top of the fuel line and then goes all the way 
It goes all the way into this vacuum hard line that came stock with the 944. It's uh, circling around behind the engine and then goes into this Y connection right here. Let's see if I can make that a little easier to see. Uh, yeah, so this Y connection splits into two separate places. The one black hard line here goes through the bulkhead and into this uh, vacuum reservoir here. I was wondering if this was necessary to keep, but I've been speaking, I've uh, combed the forums for people who are thinking about disabling it or removing it, and it sounds like the amount of vacuum uh, that you need to run this particular component of the engine is, is pretty high, and that is the, uh, the heater valve uh, and the heater stuff. I went over all of the, the coolant lines in my previous video, so I recommend giving that a look. Um, so I just decided since they're both the same amount and these, these, uh, these hard lines for vacuum and the connectors look like they're in good shape just to reuse them from the 944. The other uh, end connects to this orange line, which then snakes down and goes, there we go, right into a 90 degree one, that's a 90 degree connector that's also from the stock 944 into the bulkhead. So that is uh, the connector for your vacuum into the cabin. And then it comes back out and you can see the blue line there that is, uh, that is snaking back out. So if you, have, if you turn on heat in the car, it, uh, it will either disrupt or I think in this case, yeah, I think it, it disrupts the flow of vacuum, which engages the vacuum heater valve uh, and then opens up coolant to flow through the cabin itself where you get, and that's how you get heat. So then uh, that silicone line, that, uh, that 1 8 inch one, circles underneath the car. And you can see it snakes its way down around the starter and into the heater valve. Uh, and that is the connection. So it goes intake, around the engine, into the uh, bulkhead and into the vacuum, uh, vacuum reservoir, and then down into the heater valve itself. So that's the whole connection. Finally. Finally, the last vacuum line is this one right here, and this is another uh, eighth inch, uh, and it goes to a 90 degree, comes, uh, points straight to the, uh, the firewall, and then circles around to the back of the engine where it connects to the fuel pressure regulator here. Uh, so this is, from what I understand, not necessarily required if you're going with the setup for, natural, or for NA, but uh, the way I figure it is better to have it and not need it. I do know that if you're running a turbo, you're actually, you're absolutely gonna need this, but I have the spots, I didn't see any, it seemed like a really easy route. I don't see any reason not to have this. All right, one other minor note about uh, vacuum lines in the setup is, is that in the stock 944, especially this variant, uh, this check valve actually has another eighth inch like connector and it splits off to a check valve that sits over here and then it connects to this like dirty, uh, knitted uh, vacuum line. This is actually a connection from the uh, fuel tank all the way to the uh, charcoal canister which actually sits right here behind this fender. Uh, I haven't taken it out yet but I just decided I wanted to clean this up and I didn't think it was necessary to, to have that sort of slipshod emissions kind of problem. I have all the parts, so if this does become an issue or I need to be concerned about it or I'm not, or I'm getting fumes, uh, I will reinstall it. But for the purposes of getting things running, uh, I don't really want to have the charcoal canister there. Now, if you do decide to get rid of the charcoal canister, uh, you can delete the hard lines out of the engine bay and continue to tidy things up. There is. This is the line that connects from the gas tank. I know it's dark down here. All right, so this is the line from the uh, fuel tank. I just capped it off. And then inside of the fuel tank itself, or rather, and then inside of the, uh, the gas cap itself, I replaced the stock one with a vented uh, gas cap. So that way fumes won't build up in there. I think that that's gonna be sufficient for my purposes and it cleans up the engine bay. So that's the only other major change to the vacuum system I did. Uh, this ventilated gas cap, you could get it off of uh, Parts Geek for like $5 and it fit perfectly. All right, everyone, so that is my setup for uh, vacuum lines. If there are any changes, I will be sure to address them in a later video. And as always, all of the parts and things that I ordered uh, will be listed in the description below. So do just keep that in mind. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, I ended up buying a lot of extra uh, vacuum lines and NPT attachments and stuff like that, and it all sort of added up. 
So hopefully you're going to be able to use this list if you're planning on uh, implementing a similar setup. So that way you don't make the same mistakes I did. A big one that comes to mind is a lot of the, uh, the first adapters that I bought had these straight barbs down, but that pokes into things like the uh, coolant flange and other things uh, like the top of uh, the top of the alternator. So you're not you're going to have kinked lines. So I'd strongly encourage you to always go with a 90 degree uh, connector, not a straight one. So, all right, that is everything for me today. Don't hesitate to hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. I'll do my best to try to answer them, and I will see you all in the next video.